the Joe Rogan experience. I didn't even want SNL. I didn't want SNL. Now, you and I both know that was uh, nobody came out of there going, that's the greatest gig. It's very rarely people came out of they there. They come out of there like they were in a fight. Yeah, absolutely. Like they just got out of a fucking bar fight. Like, Abs- <laughs> exactly. That's Fuck how Phil Hartman was. When, when I first started working with Phil Hartman in 94, he had just left SNL, and he it took a while for him to be comfortable around us. Like yeah. The news radio people, the actors, were super friendly. Everybody yes. liked to get hammered. That was yeah. like the big thing. We would get fucking blasted drunk. Yeah. But we were all like really, like in terms of like actors, genuinely supportive. Like Dave Foley was the most supportive guy ever. Like he was always writing jokes for you. He was always like re- rewriting scenes for you. Like, Jim, why don't you come in and say this instead? Or he would write like really great lines. But Phil was like, he, like he was in a competition at first. He thought like everybody was going to be competing. And then he, once he relaxed, I feel like to smoke weed. And once he relaxed, he's like, you know, going over there was like everything was like dog eat dog, and everybody's at each other's throats. It's dog eat dog. It's it, and there's no rhyme or reason. Yeah, there's no rhyme or reason. It's it's just like politics. In other right. words, I can't help with Congress what bill they're going to pass, even they know, even they know this is going to work. Nope. Same kind of stuff. It's the same exact thing. Because you're fighting to get your bits on, right? You're fighting to get your pieces on. You're fighting to get your your little sketches on. Yeah, and the worst the 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 worst part is, you know, something's going to work, and you have someone come to you. They were, towards the end, it made me such a dark human being. Because I, I'm the, hey, man, let's all, yeah let's all be a team. And I used to, when I, when I worked with Hats, I said, let's look at this roster. Holy crap. Let's see who goes in the Boston Comedy Club. Let's just buy a script and put everyone in it and let them play to their strength. Wow, you know, this one. I'm like, I, I wish I had the business smarts to go back and do that. Because you're, it would have been, it would have been so much fun. I mean, maybe it would have been disaster. Maybe this guy, maybe I would have ended up getting leather pants. I got my fucking (laughs) white lion leather pants. But it makes you so, you know, I I, I don't want to rehash bad memories. You never got bitter, but you understood that bitterness is an option. Correct. And I start smoking an intense amount of pot. Yeah. Just to numb myself. I remember when you told me you quit, and you're like, dude, I'm hearing voices. I think the government's following me. (laughs) You went so far. I went (laughs) far. I let Jim quit, and but then I talked to you. I was like, oh, he might have went into Never Never Land. He he went went to the land of no return. Well. When you start thinking that the government is watching you. Nonstop. Yeah. Nonstop. They're on me because they know I think by myself. (laughs) It's like the scene in Goodfellas. God damn it, fucking helicopter. I fucking love that scene. But um, I will say this. Um, yeah, I have. Have you returned to the fold? I haven't returned the way I have in the past. Oh, but a little bit. But I have. I have. Uh, you will never see me. It's very private. You have, you're a private weed smoker? Yeah. How does that work? In other words, I don't do it with people anymore because it keeps the paranoia away. Because I don't trust anyone. Oh, okay. I don't trust anyone. Okay. I still don't. And I haven't smoked, smoked. I like, I went to. A little bit. I went out to Colorado and the five little milligrams and the ten little milligrams. Fives are nice. Those little edibles. Oh, my God. Five's nice. Yes. Just Gentle. have that. Gentle. And go, yeah. And then have like a martini. Mmm. I'm yeah. set. Yeah, a martini. Extra dirty. Not too dirty. I like it dirty. I like it. I like it. Not crazy dirty, but a little dirty. A little dirty. <laughs> I like that olive juice. It's delicious. I do too. So, here's what happened. My wife. This is why. This is why my wife's a powerhouse. She. When you find someone that don't give a shit about the industry and they only care about you, it's very hard. As as an artist that's chasing a star. Because you're always chasing the star, and you're always chasing the mansion. She would go, I'll never forget. She's like, why don't you just quit? Like, are you, seriously, are you stupid? You don't quit Saturday Night Live. What the hell is it? She, and she's like, look at you. You come home. You're miserable. They control everything. They steal your ideas. This one stole. I saw my own two eyes. 
how they treated you in this particular... How do they steal your ideas? <clears throat> Here we go. I'll give you... You I, sure you don't want to get high first? No. Nah. <laughs> Let's go take a pee break. <laughs> Let's take a pee break. <clears throat> no, here's... And again, I've released all this. Okay. You know, I got a strong moral backbone. I'm good. So, no, I don't have any bad feelings. What happened was, and I'm not going to put out... I, I don't want to hash names and all that, but what would happen is something like this. You're writing a sketch, and then one of the head writers would come in in the doorway and go, hey, I see you're writing a sketch about blah, 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 because we have the main server and we check everyone's sketches. I just want to let you know I'm writing the same thing. He goes, you can continue yours, but, you know, I'm in the room with Lauren. I'm just whoa. Oh yeah. So this is at So they would go onto the server, they would see the sketches that you're writing. And then then there was then there was times where a cast member would come in and look at look at my board and go, "Oh, what does that mean?" I go, "Oh, that's that's a that's a sketch and I know so and so's come in." And I know the ratings are going to be high that week, so I'm waiting to bring my A stuff for that. Everyone's going to come out with their fangs out when this one's on. So I'm going to save that sketch for when they're on. And then this person would ask me, oh, my God, what exactly? And I said, well, I'm going to take it out of its element. You know, like, for, like I was, back then, it was like Pesci. And I'm like, Pesci's going to read to children about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and tell and explain why his nose is red. And the big joke is because he's a rat and, and I compare it to a whole neighborhood. He's a rat. That's why his nose is red when you go... And so you end up beating certain kids, blah, blah. The next week, the whole room is set and, and you're sitting there and then this person, you know, Lauren goes, mm, next sketch is, uh, you know, Al Pacino with Scarface reading to ch school children, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. And you go, you, 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 and you look, you see their, their eyes are down. You know what's going on. You know what happened. And you can't say anything. Well, when you say something, which I eventually did, dude, I think I may be, and I, I want to challenge all SNL cast and writers, I may be the last one that threatened violence. I was in, I was in a room with one of the guys, and I literally said, I will knock your fucking teeth down your fucking throat, Whoa. you motherfucker! If you don't want to fucking be here, get the fuck out! You don't shit on my shit because you don't want to fucking... Oh, dude. Whoa. And I was, and I told him, said, I'll knock him the fuck, I'll knock his fucking teeth down his throat. I'm not, I'm not from the writing world. So that's where that place brought me. Wow. And so, and that particular instance was, see, now I'm getting all over That's the place. gotta be coming from the top down. Because the, when, when I got alone with Phil, like Phil and I became close and, you know, we would hang out together, especially in his, his dress room. He had a nice dress room, had it all set up, had a guitar, looking at his aviation books and shit and and he would uh we would talk about his time there and he's like it just made me that's just bitter and angry yes yeah it, but it seems like it's always been that way that it's been from the top down and and this particular what year were you on 95 to 98 so you were on right after phil left yeah because i was yes. with phil in 94 yes. and so when that person did that i then went up to them and i waited and I was like, you motherfucker. He goes, I didn't, no, I didn't take it. Now, this one also is getting more airtime because they're in with this specific head writer. Oh. And then the head writer comes to me. Hey, man, leave him alone. I go, hey, man, stop him from stealing. Well, you know, I don't care what he does. Just leave him alone during my sketches. I'm like, why you do? So you're, you're it's like you're in Ugh. high school, Ugh. and so yeah, it's it it makes you. <clears throat> and then <throat> here, I remember doing something where I played a drunk guy, and I didn't know exactly how to do it, but I I always wanted to be another Foster Brooks. So long story short, 
I want to do another Foster Brooks type thing. So I did the character. I'm not a great writer. I'm not a good writer at all. Um, but like, I'll, I'll come up with the character and try to, eat, and if we could put it in somewhere, great. And I remember the writer coming up saying, yeah, Lauren doesn't like uh, drunks because, you know, f- the past and John and blah, blah, blah. And I went, oh, okay. And then two weeks later. John Belushi, meaning? Yeah, I guess that's what he meant. And, and then two weeks later, it's the drunk character. Str- I'm like, what? dude, what the? F- it's it just, it's little things that mind screw you like that. So by the time. The big, the big finale was towards the end. You know, someone told me, you know what Sandler did? Sandler went through this. Everyone went through this. Comedians go through this. What you got to do is get on the update, and you got to get in the, uh, do everything you can to go on the update, and everything you can in the opening monologue, because the head writers can't mess with you. He goes, that's, that's not really that their department. That is so crazy that that's something you have to think about. So then that's why I started doing it. If you notice in 98, I started getting more monologues. And then even there, they were like, we got this. And then it was uh, a final monologue. It was Matthew Broderick. And it was w- when Matthew Broderick was on, and he, he couldn't get through some of the sketches I was doing with him. He'd start laughing. And so when we went to, he really wanted to do this monologue with me. And this one, these, these particular head writers were like, no, we're not doing it. Although Matthew was like, I want to do Jim's. I want to do Jim and Tracy's. And there was two, three sketches we had together. And he laughed during the dress. Like he couldn't keep a straight face. And then I remember the head, this particular writer I had a problem with. I didn't have a problem. I just didn't like whatever. You had a hard on for me, whatever. I, I I can't. I don't. I don't understand ego. If you got an ego, that is what it is. And he said, um, "Yeah, it's too bad he laughed because now we don't know if it works. So that's going to be cut and this cut." And you listen. We filmed the monologue. It worked, but we're going to go with my monologue during the air show. And I was like, you know what, man? I'm going to talk to Lauren. He goes, "No, you're not." I said, "No, I'm. T- I'm talking to Lauren now. I'm not afraid to talk to Lauren anymore." Because that's another thing. It's like, you know, I'll talk to the president. Don't talk really? to the president. They put this. So that he would say, no, you're not. You're yeah. not going to talk to Lauren. 100%. We'll talk to him. No, oh. we'll both go talk to him. And then that's, I knew right from that minute, I was done. I knew I was done. And then that summer, this guy named uh, Gary Considine, he ran the Tonight Show. And he said, Jim, what, what happened, dude? I said, what's the matter? He goes, so and so and so and so are are really saying you're out and I went really I go well I'll tell you what I don't want to be there anymore my wife's like just please quit she goes you said in your life if any job no matter how much money it paid makes you a miserable human being and changes the person you are you weren't going to work there she's like look at you you're angry all the time you smoke pot all the time to numb yourself you, you're not Jim anymore. Where's the goofy, the uplifting Jim? And I wanted to, I wanted to, you know, like, you're so stupid, but <laughs> you're so stupid. <laughs> but she was so smart. She was so smart. And it was the greatest. And I give Lorne a lot of credit because Lorne said to me, um, Jim, you're too nice for this business. And he, wow. And he said, which I'll never forget. It was a couple of things Lauren said. And I never blamed Lauren. I always really admired Lauren. I said, uh, oh, he goes, and if you ever want, want to do something, I'm your producer. I'll produce it for you. Which I, I never took that opportunity up. But I'll never forget when he said that to me. So I was very thankful that he was understanding and let me go. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. 
You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.